Atop the slopes of Palehua, members of the Malama Learning Center field crew are getting ready for their day. Today we'll be following them to one of the restoration sites they steward. First, let's head down the mountain and westward to Nanakuli. The Malama Learning Center, or MLC, cares for various sites with vastly different ecosystems. Some are in the mesic forests of the mountains, while some, like the site we are visiting today, are much closer to the coast. As a public park, this area may seem very familiar. That's right! We've arrived today at Nanakuli Beach, commonly referred to as Zeblands. However, our focus today is not on the beach, but the precious wetland that runs behind it. Aloha! Welcome to the Nanakuli Uliwai in the Aungkua of Nanakuli in the Moku of Waianae. I'm Chelsea and we work for Malama Learning Center, an environmental education nonprofit based in West Oahu. And what we do here at the Nanakuli Muliwai uh, is we do restoration efforts, coastal restoration efforts, to help restore the ecosystem in and around the Muliwai, which is in an estuary. And so what we do is we outplant native Hawaiian species, coastal species that we build, the water quality. Recently, we've been dabbling in taking out the invasive fish from the stream using hand holes. Today, MLC is hosting a group of student volunteers to learn about the space and how they can care for it. One of the most important steps to this is Kilo, or observation. Kilo allows us to identify changes in the environment, but it is also a time to reflect on ourselves and our purpose in this space. Kilo began even before we arrived. Like most days in Nanakuli, we noticed today was sunny and hot, with very little wind. However, the large rains from the days before may have contributed to the Mulivai's unusually high water level. Something we hardly see here at the Nanakuli Mulivai is when the stream actually comes in and floods our planting area. As you can see in the past where we've planted all these natives, they're actually now underneath the water and there's baby fish swimming up in the banks. Pretty cool. MOC has noticed this level of water after a large rain event. The rain may have also caused the Mulibai to look brown, perhaps from all the sediment eroding out to sea. Typically, it's closer to a blue or green color. Aside from the water, one of MLC's main focuses is on replacing invasive plants with native plants. So today we have some of our staff that's um, pulling out some invasive grasses so that our natives like Puhaloa and Okulekule, which is going to be further in that area, can grow. And then we are being shaded by our nice invasive yabe. Other native plants we saw were Pohuehue, Akiaki, Ahuava, Ko, Loulu, Mauakiaki, and Ilima. MOC has also seen native birds in the area. The transformations that have occurred after putting in native plants we've seen with the removal of pickleweed that a lot of the native birds have been fishing on the islands within the Mulivai and you'll see them walk along the islands of Akulikuli and they'll be craned and looking for fish and then they'll catch fish out of the Mulivai. But when we look at the invasive pickleweed that's here, a lot of it grows straight up and it prevents a lot of our native birds from being able to fish naturally. Many other things tell us of the current and previous state of this area. These white rocks are actually fossilized coral, which tells us this area used to be underwater. Why we see this area as a significant place to take care of in the community is that within our generation, our kupuna in this community used to use this blue as a resource to gather food gather a fish that they would bring home to their ohana. So this was a place of abundance and it was a place that was cherished in this community. I really enjoy this place because it tells the many stories and mo'olalos about um, the Wa'inai side, like Heliakon, where Maui went up to Lasodos and so that his mom could dry out the kapo. And I love that MLC is partnering up with so many people to plant so many kupuna plants like this low so it's a great restoration area. And over time, due to many factors, invasive species, you know, pollution, trash, shifts in perspectives, we see that the sentiment around this stream is not what it used to be. And 
people see this place as more of like an eyesore, it's a stink pond, it's not valued as much as it used to be. So what we're really trying to do here at Malama Learning Center is one, use this space as an outdoor classroom because it is so dynamic and the stream is constantly changing and it's so amazing to watch that change with students and study that. But also to try and shift perspectives around why we should care for degraded spaces in our community because they deserve our Malama and our care. The Malama Learning Center highly encourages volunteers to contact them if they're interested in participating in one of the workdays or educational visits hosted at the site. Thank you for joining us today and hope to see you at a future workday.